Good evening, everyone, and good evening to Olya Lialina, who is connecting from her house in uh, Stuttgart, Germany. I am uh, Emanuela Mazzonis, and I have assisted Francesco Bonami in uh, creating the Me Family platform, Me Family project for the MUDAM. Uh, before starting, I want to thank you, Olya, for being with us tonight and for having accepted to be part of this uh, online uh, public program. With you tonight, we are already at our seventh appointment and we started in October and we will conclude uh, in June. So before uh, we start our conversation, I would like to make a very brief introduction about uh, Olya and uh, her work. So Olya Lialina was born in uh, Moscow, in Russia. She graduated from the Moscow State University as a journalist and a film critic in the, at the beginning of the 90s. Olya founded the first real net art gallery and the last real net art museum. You are now currently professor at the Merits Academy in Stuttgart, where you are actually based. And uh, you started to teach as a web designer professor at the end of the 90s. So Olya, you are a prominent net art figure and pioneer. You have focused your research since the beginning of the 90s on the role of the internet in the society and in the everyday life. Your career began in the world of film. You started making web pages for your film club, the Cinema Phantom, and for yourself as well. Then in, the, uh, in 1996, you decided to do something that was uh, diverse, that looked differently from what uh, people could normally watch uh, on the net, no animations, no sound, but you used all black and white. So at that moment, you have produced your first online work entitled My Boyfriend Came Back from the War, and that was produced in 1996. In this piece, you were uh, already using uh, intertitles, flickering imagery, close-up shots of actors in the interactive multilinear format of an hypertext. The user could advance the story by clicking uh, on hyperlinked fragmentary phrases and images, and which, uh, with each link, a click, the browser uh, viewport subdivides into smaller and smaller frames. You uh, yourself have defined this work as a narrative experiment with the brand new technology of the HTML frames. So already in this work, and again, I, I underline that we are talking about the 90s, it was evident how much the role of the internet in the art world was considered as an artistic medium leading to the creation of the term net language. So I would like to ask uh, Olya if, she can, if you can tell us more about this uh, work, my boyfriend came back from the war and what was your aim, uh, the goal you wanted to reach out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me and being a part of the exhibition and the program and for asking this uh, question, the question that brings us now a um, quarter of the century back. Yeah, it's 25 years ago, yeah, like one day, uh, but completely you know, different time and different intentions and so different uh, relations one would have with this medium that was a new medium. Uh, yeah, and uh, as you know, as uh, everybody else at that moment who got internet access of, and got an idea that you can uh, make uh, a web page yourself and to make it about whomever or whatever you like, I started to do it. Yeah? I started to make a web page about our film club and um, was uh, really as everybody else collecting materials, scanning stuff, uh, thinking about how my buttons, how navigation of the website should look. So all these things and of course um, also surfing around the web and being uh, as an uh, 
as a filmmaker, film critic at this moment. He had been also um, sort of um, puzzled by why people do it so loud and so, <laughs> so bright and why um, things are um, so, you know, I would at that moment say not professional. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so on one hand, I wanted to make uh, really my intentions were to make something what would be different from uh, things that um, don't um, look like, oh, let me put like this, to make something that would look more like a film, look, look more like a story than a web page about something. And another intention was, as you mentioned, actually to try to speak another language. Of course, the intention was not so artificial. I want to develop and bring to the world a net language. It was, you know, it came later, all these formulations, all these terms. But this uh, um, uh, recognition that there is another language, it was already there. The language that uh, you can uh, um, talk, you can write, and by this you create something that in fact is not just a film, that may, can be more as a film. Yeah, so one thing was to, you know, <laughs> intentions going into different direction. One was to bring the web aesthetics closer to the film, and another one in no way to make a web page about the film, but to create a story, the film. And this is why also this black and white aesthetics and the frames, yeah, for me at this moment, these were also frames like on film stock, something what you can cut and edit. And now you finally, you suddenly, sorry, uh, see that this is another logic of the frames that the screen can be divided um, into them. Yeah, and you can make, uh, you can make editing differently. And also you sort of give your viewers the, uh, chance to um, <clears throat> to go through your story, your film, net film, I called it at that moment, mm -hmm. in the order that I don't totally control. So I don't know who will choose what phrase, what image. Yeah, so it was very exciting to try it at this moment. And uh, I was very lucky that the work attracted attention. And um, people also were using it as an example. Yes, you can make art online <laughs> yes thank you for this explanation Olya and I think that um, after this uh, experiment in a way about a new form of language um, and after different works you uh, you made uh, the year after is also the beginning of the uh, new century and then think about works as yours as uh, zombie and mummy midnight or gravity where you were using elements of the early web. You have collected this type of elements in order to create this kind of works. And then again, you changed a little bit um, the, the language, if I can say the topic, and you have made three GIFs models out of your image. Um, you dancing, you hula hoop, and you playing an instrument. And, you made these uh, GIFs models in order to suggest to the viewers to use these GIFs in their own web pages. And at that time, so we are in uh, uh, 2006, people didn't make many web pages uh, by their own anymore. And you suddenly discovered that many web pages have actually used your images, your GIFs. So, uh, I would like to know what was um, the aim of this particular work and what did you want to achieve letting the people, the viewers, uh, using your gifts? Yeah, that's a long story. And uh, in fact, it's 10 years Yeah, in between my boyfriend came back from the war and me becoming an animated GIF model. So they're uh, becoming a little animation that is there online to be I'm offered myself that people please use me on your web pages if you still make web pages because I'm 
Perfect. I am transparent, <laughs> so mm -hmm. the background is transparent. I will look great on every background, and my movements are looped so smoothly that it will uh, be <laughs> nice. Yeah. So I, this is how I was um, trying to um, show myself in the showroom, my virtual showroom at that moment. Yeah, and um, this um, I was. Um, actually making a message uh, about the web pages and amateur web productions of the last um, uh, 10 or 12 years, um, paying a tribute to people mm -hmm. who were producing things like this, because of course I was not uh, the first one who made the uh, um, animated gift that was made on purpose to be used on other pages. Yeah? So I mm -hmm. wanted to actually to continue this tradition of free graphics and to enter collection of free graphics. Also, it was um, um, in the years preceding this, I really used a lot of um, uh, graphic and audio elements and also the pieces of code that were made by amateurs. Mm -hmm. for their web pages. So I was um, yeah, like feeling that uh, I want to give back. <laughs> yeah, I also want to be uh, part of um, this culture. Yeah, and then also, you know, another intention somehow <clears throat> can be formulated maybe a bit in a bit pathetic way, but I wanted to become immortal in digital realm. <laughs> So it was already time then people started to talk a, a lot about memes, about meme culture. So this posting, spreading stuff. And, but for me, it was not so interesting. I thought that the real immortality, if you are used on the pages of the people, if you become part of something, not just posted somewhere, but you are part of, a, of something bigger. So this was the intention. And uh, yeah, but I couldn't know in 2005, 2006, where was I used. And I also I saw and I felt that less and less people make their web pages, as you mentioned. But then in 2011, then Google introduced their uh, image search where you can search for similar image. I finally looked and uh, was uh, again happy and pleased to find myself on a lot of uh, uh, fitness sites, on a lot of music sites, on some personal pages. Sometimes I was used as a reaction gift. So I really, at a certain moment, I found out that I succeeded as a gift model. I had a career. <laughs> A kind of an immortal career, we can actually say. Hopefully. Hopefully it's not the end. No, exactly. So now I would like uh, to talk about um, your book, Digital Folklore, that has been published in um, 2009. And uh, in this book, in the title of the book, you actually use a subtitle. Um, in a form of a question. And um, the subtitle is, do you believe in users? Uh, this um, uh, sentence, uh, it's interesting because you took it from uh, the, the movie, um, The Throne. Um, you, you quoted the sentence that has been used in the movie. And um, in 2012, the word user was eliminated from the interface design business. And uh, here I'm um, referring to Facebook or Twitter. And you have explained how uh, the following three words have been changed, meaning that computer became technology, user interface became experience, users became people. So in your work, you are uh, underlining the importance of ourselves as users of the net. And you want to remember also our uh, rights as users in order to protect uh, our rights ourselves. Um, I listened to a conference of yours in 2014 uh, where you were underlining that in the end of the 90s, there was a tendency to let the browsers disappear. And you explained uh, very well in your website this uh, uh, topic and I'm quoting now um, 
some uh, an explanation of yours where you're saying that there is there has always been a tendency in digital cultures to render the subjacent technology invisible naturalizing the gestures and habits of the users it is precisely in apparently obsolete styles or in abandoned internet platforms where the trace of the user's presence taking cre um, creative and unexpected decisions becomes visible again. The development of the invisible computer, you said, gives birth to the invisible user, a standardized user obliv oblivious to his rights particularly one that sums them all up. The user right to literally use the net, to adopt and customize technologies in creative, unexpected, and unpredictable ways beyond the expectation of the regional programmers. Now, I would like to ask you if you can define the word user and explain to us how important is today to be still considered as a user of the net and if it's still possible to be considered as a user. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, um, again, thank you for this uh, question, for not ignoring this part of uh, my also artistic life and my research and my writing, so there's so much sun now. <laughs> uh, and. Um, uh, you know that uh, then I say user, of course, mean uh, computer user. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, this is um, clear. And um, also, I um, I know that it's quite an unpopular um, word. Mm. Uh, and also, yeah, uh, there was a lot of effort made by IT industries, by IT giants, to uh, get rid of this word as well as the word computer itself, as well as the interface. Yeah, and um, uh, also to um, address uh, people who are using computers as people, <laughs> really. Mm -hmm. just, uh, to, um, you know, to uh, not that we don't feel um, that we are in charge of something when we are um, interacting with the computers. So this is uh, that we don't even come to the idea that something depends on us. Yeah, mm -hmm. that uh, we are using the, that we forget that it is a sin system in front of us that was programmed and programmed by somebody and this somebody can reprogram it at any moment. And plus it, we also shouldn't think about the Come, we shouldn't come to the idea that the system can be maybe reprogrammed by us ourselves. Mm -hmm. So everything what has to do with um, um, control, with um, initiative, with knowing how things work, all this uh, was um, on purpose eliminated uh, from the on the level of language, yeah, because it's uh, maybe the easiest and maybe most important thing. And you ask what the user uh, mean, and this is actually the user is a person who uh, brings uh, originally in computer history, it is the person who brings the system in function. Mm -hmm. And there is also another very good explanation that was uh, um, started to be erased from the vocabulary even before computers. Um, but um, in another story, the word user was replaced by the word consumer when it comes to, in general, to the life, even before the personal computers. And it was, uh, you know, because the user at that time meant um, the person who knows how the things work. <laughs> and it's again, <laughs> of course, what was not something what market would want to to you. So that's why the word, uh, it was in the 60s in English language, the word uh, consumer very much replaced um, the, uh, the word user. Yeah, and uh, um, I, um, I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose the World Wide Web and the browser, my environment as an artist. Yeah, I also, I teach uh, students who I hope would become 
net, net artists who would become web designers, who would create interfaces that make sense who will make what is called the user experiences, but I want them to be responsible uh, for what they are doing. Innovative, you know, to do something what nobody else did before, but actually all the time remembering that there are um, users on another side and we, everybody is the uh, computer user um, at a certain moment. So to give power to these people, I think that the um, user is a noble and computer user is a noble and powerful role. And uh, it would be a, a good to fight for it and not just to disappear um, in uh, all this invisible, you know, mess that everything is invisible, ubiquitous, and you just talk to something with the voices, yeah, Alexa or, mo or mobile or something, what will come next. Everything becomes, so to say, natural, intuitive, and it's very easy to forget that these are program systems. And this is also what I, as a teacher, as an artist, try to prevent. And also in my artworks, one can say I, what I do, I, my audience are computer users. These are people, mm -hmm. I address computer users. Right. I think to um, this um, topic about the importance of the user, the, pro the importance of the uh, program system, it, it, my last question is linked to this topic and is the question about the work we are uh, showing in our platform uh, self-portrait that you made in 2018 and is actually one of your most uh, recent works. We can consider it uh, as a network installation as you um, underlined to me uh, many times when we start talking about your uh, project. And in this particular case, you are taking a step forward and you created a self-portrait with three different browsers. The work is a self-portrait fragmented into three parts, each of which, which is accessible through the use of specific browsers whose windows are reduced to occupy a third of the desktop screen with in order to create a digital triptych. So what you are most interested in is not the final result, but rather the creative and experimental process of using the browsers. So the choice of the three browsers is not left to chance, rather you give precise instructions. So the first browser is um, an, every, um, an everyday one. The second is Tor, a browser that guarantees anonymity and secure browsing. And the third, Beaker is a peer-to-peer -peer browser. So the aim you want to achieve is to convey through a network installation how important is the dissemination of an alternative web. One that protects the user through the tools of the network itself, but is used in less uh, commonplace formats. So I would like to ask you more about this uh, work what was also your source of inspiration? And of course, the fact that we are presenting the work on, in our platform in a different way. Of course, we, we, we were uh, obliged to change the way of presenting the work because it's in a, a virtual platform. Otherwise, it uh, should have been presented as a real network installation in the uh, museum gallery. Yeah, you know, uh, um... The, the way it is shown, it is online, it is not um, really interactive at this moment, so the viewers, they are not uh, arranging the browsers themselves, but uh, it's um, absolutely great uh, how Mudam uh, how museum handled this and you are actually running it, yeah? So the system administrator or the museum itself is a person who uh, made an effort and uh, put uh, the three browsers windows next to each other in a perfect way. And this is how uh, lazy people who don't want to make it themselves can, <laughs> can enjoy the work uh, at this moment. Yeah, because I am um, 
I don't like to show or I I don't show at all my work as video, you know, this as screencasts. For me, it's important that it's uh, live. Yeah, that maybe that you can see the clock on the um, desktop that shows the real time. Yeah, and you understand that this is uh, um, happening right now. Yeah, you know this uh, the ins inspiration and how the work was made was again to address the computer users or web users, internet users at this moment, um, and to ask them for um, some action they could mm -hmm. do, not uh, to be passive. And this action is, yeah, please uh, um, install two more browsers on your computer. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's allowed, it's legal, it's possible, and doesn't, it will not make too much time. And then also open this uh, three <laughs> browser windows uh, in the way uh, that it will, the picture of me trying to bring my hair in order will work uh, as intended. So um, by this, you know, it's a little thing to ask, but it also to show that some, some things are still in your, um, uh, what is the word? You are still in charge. Yeah, mm -hmm. something you can be. And also me as an artist, I, show, I sort of show off with my uh, ability to work across protocols, not just across browsers, but across protocols. There are three different protocols, so three different um, webs yeah, mm -hmm. that are coming together. And um, it is uh, it was very nice to try it out. It is work that uh, um, uh, uh, that demands attention because uh, rules are changing. You have browsers, protocols, relations have to be um, reestablished. So it's not something what uh, I can uh, I just made and can leave unattended. So there's yeah a lot of. Um, under construction, <laughs> forever under construction that uh, um, goes on. Yeah, but this, uh, you know, I always, since uh, 1996, I try to make work that also um, shows that is really net art. Mm -hmm. Net means that it only works if computer is online. That, um, so the things are on different servers and um, your browser uh, can bring it all together and you can enjoy something or, or not, who knows. Yeah, and in this case, really with self-portrait, maybe I went a bit um, one step further and it's not just different servers, but really different protocols. Yeah, it was worth <laughs> trying it. And I really hope that uh, um, the work still have some more time to to leave because things uh, who knows what happens with Tor yeah who knows what happens with peer-to-peer -peer and also actually who knows what happens with the, our classic world wide web it's all not stable yeah I agree I completely agree and um, thank you Alia this is, was a very um, clear explanation uh, especially about your way of working, your way of being across protocols, across webs. Um, and I really uh, like your sentence uh, about, the war, about the fact that it works if computer is online. And it's really important because in this way you can really understand the concept of the net uh, art. Um, unfortunately, we are uh, running a little bit out of time. So I need to conclude our... Um, uh, interesting interview and I would like just to um, add a few words uh, saying that uh, I could actually say that you are proposing an alternative web uh, where you are recognizing uh, internet as a medium for artistic ex expression and storytelling and moreover I would also say that you have always uh, considered the net as a place that favors the active uh, participation of each individual user, as you just mentioned before, inviting the viewer to be part of your project, which is uh, perfectly uh, corresponds to the message of our project, the Mi Family platform. 
Um, so now I would like to invite everyone who is watching us to uh, not only enjoy your work on our um, platform, but also on your uh, website, the art.teleportasia.org, which uh, is an amazing uh, uh, website where you can really learn a lot about uh, your work, your projects, your, um, your research. I, I would say about the net and about the users, about the protocols, uh, about the, the web. So thank you, Alia, very much for this uh, amazing uh, interview. And uh, I wish you a good uh, evening and I hope to talk to you very soon. Thank you, Alia. Thank you very much for your questions and again for being part of this wonderful exhibition. Sure. Thank you, Alia. Goodbye. Goodbye.